I've made a huge amount of progress to Barracanus since the last update video. You might notice, I got the hero there, as opposed to the bounding box. A hero is fully animated, I can run, I can jump, I can walk, I can do all sorts of stuff. Not to mention, the hero is extremely customizable. There are about 8,000 possible combinations of hats, hairstyles, shirts, legging, and shoes. That is a lot when you think about it. So, what are all the various hairstyles and stuff? Let's start with the hats. This, of course, is with no hat. This is the wizard hat. This is the sombrero. The top hat. Turban. And exclusive to the royalty, which is King Barakin and Queen Anna, is the crown. And, of course, back to nothing. There are 16 possible hairstyles that you can choose from. Starting from here, which is bald, you have extra long split, extra long straight, long random, long split, long straight, long swept, medium curtained, medium random, medium straight, Medium swept, which is also Queen Anna's hairstyle. Short curtained. Samurai bun. Short straight. Short swept. Extra short straight, which is King Barrican's hairstyle. And of course, it's back to bald. Index 12 is the default, but of course, you're more than welcome to change it. As far as the shirts go, this is the t-shirt. That's the dress or robe. It's kind of both together in one. This is the long sleeve. This is the royal robe, which is exclusive to you-know-who, the royalty. This is the crop top. A shirt. And back to the t-shirt again. As far as the legging goes, that's shorts, capris, pants, dress, robe, and royal robe. And of course it's back to the shorts again. As far as the shoes go, that's the running shoe, boots, barefoot, sandals, and back to the running shoes again. I can also change the shields. This is the first tier shield, second tier, third tier, fourth tier. I will be covering shields in much greater depth when I get to the point where I'm dealing with combat. But for now, this is how it'll be started. I will explain what all new stuff I've added into the test level here, and it's a lot of new stuff. Like this, for example. Doesn't that look like a key? I also like that shine effect that I've got there, too, for it. I can also look down like this, duck and look down, it changes the bounding box. I can also look up in exactly the same way. So, what's this gold key about? Well, when you find a treasure chest and it's locked, if you have one of these or find one, go back to that treasure chest and unlock it. Chances are, you're going to get something really good out of it. Usually huge amounts of gold or stat potions and other similar stuff. So how do you get it? Just simply touch it like that. And of course, there are more keys, and oh my goodness, that is a huge key. Oh my goodness, what is that big blue key all about? That's the final boss key, or there's actually five of them to be found in the entire game, when you get all 14 Great Fiends defeated in all 12 areas. Do note that two areas have two Great Fiends together in one. But, that aside, once you get the Great Fiends defeated and speak to King Barakin and Queen Anna to get a key item, then you will be a going off to a quest to go find the final boss keys. And there are five of them. But the problem is, their locations are completely randomized. There's a way around that. In the town of Lacrent, there's a fortune teller named Kevin Peterson that can tell you kind of a rough idea where they are. It's not exact, but it gives you a kind of an idea where to kind of start looking. The red keys are fiend keys for the great fiends. When you find one a locked passage with a red door, basically, 
If you have a great fiend key, go ahead and unlock it, fight the boss, and when you defeat the boss, you will gain an ability. Of course, before fighting a boss, make sure to save first. You don't want to make sure you end up, don't lose your progress, that is. But that aside, this green key is something special. It's actually for a side quest, but that will be covered much later. So what's up? Looking up, I can see there's something there. Oh, wasn't that a ladder I just saw? That is a ladder. What do you know? Well, if you want to use a ladder, all you got to do is just stand in front of it like this. Press up to start climbing. Press down to climb down. Just hold up to climb to up. Hold down to climb down. That's all there is to it. But you can also grab on from midair. The only thing is, you have to have just enough speed. You can't have too much speed, or you won't be able to grab on. This is back. This ladder here is actually a foreground ladder. As you can tell, it's kind of drawing in front of the hero, versus this one that is not. Notice the other key there. Hmm, I wonder how you get to that. Is there some kind of secret passage or something? Hmm. Well, could start climbing up this ladder. And up and up and up it goes. My goodness, that's so long. There's a faster way to climb a ladder. Jump and press up repeatedly. Of course, it's kind of touchy. Climb speed is actually indexed to that of the... Uh, what is that? Your top speed. That was weird. What's going on there? <laughs> I think I found another bug. Yeah, I definitely got another bug here that I need to figure out. But this one, I can't climb up anymore. The reason for that is, that is a ladder that only goes up to the ceiling, as opposed to going up all the way. If you look closely, on here, of course, it landed on the spring. That don't help. You can see there's a gap in the terrain there. There is no such gap up in this terrain up here. That's a sign that that's only going to stop at the ceiling. Where does this red spring go? Wow, those really take you up. Hmm, I don't see anything. Well, that's basically this upper area of it, anyway. And if I remember, that's where that one key is. And I got that key. I wonder where a locked treasure chest is. I need a treasure chest. Eh, uh, what was that? Those white things. Those are what I call puffs. Just for reference here. But the puffs are also varied to go with it. I just saw another ladder. Where does this go? If you notice here, it's cut out here. And as I head down, the faster way to descend is just jump once you get down. You won't be able to jump when you're already in the terrain. However, something about that over there does not look nice at all. They look kind of pointy and sharp. Those are spikes. They do damage. Case in point. Yes, you saw the damage pop up. And of course, you see that some HP is missing. But how do you get up that? Uh, that was a bigger number, 25. The reason for that is, the faster you impact spikes, the pointed part, head on, the more damage they do. This looks mighty tricky. Hmm, can I make that jump? There we go. Hey, what is that odd-looking thing over there? That's a passage. I will be covering that shortly. <laughs> and the faster you impact the spikes, the more damage they do. In case you're wondering on the behavior on how they, the animation of the pop-ups are. There's a spring here that leads up to that. But let's explore this area, because it's definitely very different from before. This is one area I do need to work, though, because I do have some problems with the collision. But that's because I'm also working on... I'm actually not supposed to be able to stand on this at the moment, because I have yet to actually implement that in. 
Of course, there's another passage. It's just that I got more work to do. So, what's this about passages? Well, to use one, you just simply stand in front of it and press up. But where does it lead? The thing is, if you're in front of a passage like this, look around. There's going to be a sign somewhere. I don't have them implemented just yet, but you'll probably see a sign like maybe right here. You'll probably see one maybe here or something like that. It'll tell you exactly where to go. So, let's go find out where this goes. I like that fading effect I put in. Doesn't that look like Helena Forest? really does look very familiar, doesn't it? And that's because it is Helena Forest. The only problem is, where do I go from here? I don't see anything down below, so I can take a risk jump like that. Wow, that was fast. There's a red spring. What was that that was up there? Another platform with a red spring. Ah, that's how you get back. All right. Whew. That was almost a scroll speed limit. Whoa! Wee! That was so fast. Did you see something was a little different? You may... I'll get to that a little bit. But uh, you see that kind of violet kind of color there? That dark violet? Well, you remember how I was mentioning something about filler, right? Well, if I look up and try to do a careful jump, you can kind of see that that one's just not quite getting, covering it in full. But on this one, it's guaranteed to be able to cover that. But I'm not having the terrain stop here. I'm having it stop here instead. So, how is that going to be fixed? That's what mid-ground filler is all about. This area is actually supposed to be underwater, but I currently don't have the water implemented in just yet. That will be one of the next things. The water level is at the very bottom of where I'm at now. The feet, basically. The very bottom of the feet, that's basically the water level. In case you're wondering on where that is. This is gliding. You have to get an ability from one of the bosses to use that. Now, what's this about the oddity with that was going on? Yeah, look how fast that is. When you chain springs like that, you can get some ridiculous speeds. But, I'm going to start breaking. Of course, I just have it in debug pause mode. Notice the different puff there. That's very different. That's a different color. That's because the faster you go when you're making the puffs, which is basically dust clouds in a way, the bigger and more extreme they get. Hip <laughs> puffs going over the edge, that's funny. Yep, and of course, if you really, really crank up the speedometer to an extreme, then you can end up encountering the ultimate of all the puffs, which is uh, kind of a yellow-white color. Let's go back. Uh, okay, what is this? This is weird. That's because I don't have actual position and data put in just yet for where everything is. Of course, it's just the familiar Harina Plains. Really narrow platform there. Spikes to be careful of. Right, normally, the HP would actually be where it was originally. But let's go check out that other passage that was over here. Where does that one lead? Ah, Skyless Temple. My favorite setting, because I like how the background came out. Let's see, what's down below? Don't see anything. Hmm. So let's try a Scouting Glide. I don't see anything over there. Ooh, went over the edge. And of course, this area is extremely vertical. Where am I? Wow, we such a long ways. It's a very vertical level, but it's not the most vertical. Mount Solis is that. And speaking of Mount Solis, you actually enter Skyless Temple from over here in a jump that's kind of like that in a way, just about. Except it's actually a lot higher, and the terrain here is very different from that. But that aside, that's just the basic idea. 
On the other side, it's Lake Shelley, but it's a one-way route. As in, you can only get to Lake Shelley, but you can't go back the other way. My goodness, there's a lot of red springs here. And just so you know, Shannon Trenna is the default name for the hero. Of course, like with the appearance type stuff, you're more than welcome to change it. In case you're wondering, this area here is actually very much like what the actual temple itself would be like in the levels itself. Of course, I don't have the level editor, so I had to drastically simplify stuff. But it's just enough to give you the basic idea. This rug here is used with both Skyless Temple and also the castle itself. Remember the area where you start the whole game at? Same thing is used there, right in the castle. So, that's basically the main stuff for here. This video was created by Ulilia. Thank you for watching. And just as a secret, I made the song for this particular area. It starts off, well, at 90, I'll start off with true speed, 100%. Then I'll go 90, 80, 70, 60, because it sounds pretty good even then. And then I'll go 110, 125, 140, then 160. Enjoy.